Hello, my name's Mr. Fisher. I'm the head of maths here at Open Academy. Over the next couple of slides, we're going to be giving you some mathematical challenges and also you'll be introduced to the rest of my team. Here at the Open Academy, in the maths department, we really are focusing on your confidence in mathematics. So please, when you come here in September, don't be afraid at all for the subject of maths. We are going to work with you, we're going to support you and help you improve your mathematical skills to help you go on further in your education and in life. So as I said to you before, there's going to be some challenges for you to do to hopefully improve your confidence and so you feel that you're able to do maths. So I'm going to hand you over to the first challenge and then if you click past the challenge once you've done it, you will be introduced to my Deputy Head of Maths, Mr Bradshaw. I will then speak to you at the end of the presentation. Okay, hello, I'm Mr Bradshaw. I'm the Deputy Head of Maths and Head of Key Stage 3 Maths as well. Uh, my favourite sort of problem to get in maths is a really long wordy one where you have to break it down and do a lot of work to get to the end result because once you get to that end result and you get the right answer, it feels really satisfying and feels really good. So that leads us quite nicely onto what's behind me, which is the problem that hopefully you've had a go at. Now these come up on Facebook quite a lot, so when you're my age and you're a bit older, um, you can look really clever because you can hopefully get them right after watching this one. Okay, so we'll have a look at it. Hopefully you started with the top row and if we're looking at it, we can see that three drinks add up to 30 and each of the drinks must cost the same, so they're each going to be 10. So 10 add 10, add 10 makes 30. So once we've worked that out, we can start looking at our second row and we can replace this drink with 10. So we know it's worth 10. So now what I've got is I've got 10 plus a burger plus a burger equals 20. Now hopefully you're thinking to yourself, well I know 10 plus 10 equals 20. So these two burgers must be worth 10, which means they're each worth 5. Because 5 add 5 makes 10. Let's just double check it. 10 add 5 add 5 is 20. So happy days, we're on the right tracks. So next slide. We know the verb is worth five. Well, the total's got to be nine. So hopefully you're thinking to yourself, five add four makes nine. So if both of these are worth four, that means this is worth two and this is worth two. Now this is where you've got to look at the picture very carefully and this is where quite a lot of people go wrong. If we actually look, there's two sets of chips here, okay? Um, there's two sort of cartons of chips, so each one is worth one. Each carton of chips is worth one. Okay? So then what we're going to do is we're going to go on to our bottom row and we're going to use that. So we're going to use the burgers. We worked out were worth five. We've got the single carton of chips, not two anymore, so that's only worth one. And we've got the drink which was worth ten from the top row. Now a lot of people here would go five plus one is six times ten is sixty. Now, that's where people go wrong, because hopefully in primary school, you might have been taught something called FODMAS. And that tells us what order we've got to do calculations. Now, it starts with brackets, and then order, and then division, then multiplication, then addition, and then subtraction. So if I look at this, I've got to multiply before I've got to add, add because it goes in that order. So if I'm looking at this, the first thing I should do is the multiplication. So I'm going to do 1 times 10 first of all, which is 10. So this bit is worth 10. And then I need to do 5 add 10. So my answer is 50. Uh, well done if you got that one. If not, well done for giving it a go, that's all we ask. Um, other than that, that's kind of it. I will just look forward to seeing you in Year 7, getting into some maths. Hello, my name's Mr Knight. Uh, I'm one of the teachers at Open Academy. 
Uh, I'm really interested in algebra as a subject. Uh, I really like kind of getting into all the weird things that you can do with it. Um, also some of the stuff to do with shape. Uh, but I also really like doing a bit interesting and weird kind of lessons that you might not have seen before. And looking into some of the areas of maths that aren't necessarily being tested on, um, but are really interesting. A couple of lessons every, every now and again. So one of the ones that some people might be aware of is um, a particular kind of shape. So if you get a piece of paper, a bit of sellotape, and you fold it in half, obviously you can make a little loop. If you put one twist in it, then you've made a Mobius loop. It's a very interesting and kind of weird maths shape because if you put your pen on it and just pull it along like this, you'll find out that without moving your pen off the table, you actually end up drawing on both sides of the shape because doesn't actually have two sides, it's got one. You've joined the front to the back. And in fact, if you then go along and cut down that line without going through the center, then something a little bit weird happens because once you've cut all the way through, you just end up with a bigger loop. It doesn't actually get cut in half, it doesn't really get any smaller. It's just another loop. So I love doing weird things like that with, uh, uh, with shapes and things that you can do. And uh, one of the ones that always gets some people's attention is uh, my paper aeroplanes. They do not look like anyone else's and normally when I make them, people just assume that they can't fly. If you start with a sheet of paper and just lay it kind of diagonally, fold it in half, so you get these two little peaks next to each other and smooth out that side. If you then take that part and fold it up a couple of times so that you end up with some parts sticking out either side there from that diagonal. And smooth out these things so it folds up. You can loop and tuck that part of the paper into the other one. Make sure it's a nice neat circle and you end up with possibly the weirdest paper aeroplane that anyone has ever seen and the one that most people think won't fly at all. Let's see if it'll work. Those are the kind of things that I like to, to do in my maths lessons. The uh, next thing that you'll be looking at is a um, a uh, little maths problem, have a look at it, see if you can work out what, uh, what the answer to it is. And in just a moment, um, Mr. Phillips will explain what the correct answer is. Hello Year, year 6s and soon to be Year 7s. My name is Mr. Phillips and I'm a maths teacher at Open Academy. My favourite thing about math has got to be algebra. You've learned loads of operations using with numbers, such as adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing. Well, it turns out you can do the same thing with letters too, so I find that really interesting. The other thing I really like is the ability to think logically and systematically when solving problems. So those two things particularly, we're going to need to tackle this problem now. Hopefully you've seen this problem earlier on and you've had a go at it. So let's see how to solve this one then. We need to think systematically, as I've said, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to consider different size triangles. So firstly, we're going to consider the triangle of that size. Okay, so we're going to consider how many there are of this size. So just counting those, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we've got 12 of those. Hopefully you saw that. But notice the hint, or a clue here, is that there are more than 12. So we shouldn't stop there, there are more. Okay, so just get a rubber. Brilliant. So now we need to think about, is there another triangle that's bigger than that? And there is. There is one of this size here. Hopefully you can see that. There's ones of those size. And they are made up of four of the smaller triangles. So let's get a little sketch of that. I'm thinking of 
how many are there of that size? So if you like, you can think about what the top is of the triangle and we're just rotating round. So I've got one there, two, three, four, five, and six. So I've got six of that size. We're not quite done. Some of you may have noticed two more triangles lurking in this problem. We've got one just there and another one there. So we've got two more triangles we need to add on. Now we need to count these up. So we've got 12, 6 and 2. These added together make a grand total of 20. So hopefully some of you got that. Well done if you did, that's a really tough problem. Um, yep, yeah, my name is Mr Phillips and I look forward to seeing you in the next academic year. Hi, my name is Mrs Marsham and I teach maths for those that find maths a little bit challenging. So because of that, we've got a lot of resources and I'd like you to have a look at all the resources we have in the classroom to help you. Okay, we've got for place value, we've got 100 tens and units, and it goes a bit further on and a bit further to the right on the tens and the hundreds. We've got rounding up and rounding down. We've got um, graphs and grids. We've got place maps for 100 squares for the numbers to help you count. We've got the um, place values again to go on there. We can write our numbers on in there. We've got times tables. I love times tables. We've got big mass, and that will help you remember the order of big mass. We have number lines to count on and back on with negative and positive numbers. And we've got fraction squares and we can colour them in. And more grids and decimal numbers to help you with those. And obviously the good old fashioned number lines. One thing I love about maths is we can explore it in all different ways. And I love playing games with numbers. So this is for countdown. Now I'm going to show so many numbers that are on the board which you're going to count in and we can either add them, take them away, multiply them or divide them. So let's pick some numbers. So we have got on the top row or the bottom row. So the first one we'll do a top row. So on the first number is number 19. Second number, let's go for one on the bottom, let's do this one. And we've got the number five. Let's put this on here. Second number, let's take one on here, we'll add this one here, and we've got the number three. Let's pull them here. And the last one, let's have one from the top, and we'll choose this number, and we've got the number six. Now the next thing in countdown is always oh, that wonderful countdown clock. The object is, is to make a number. I will put a number here, and you have to try and make the number out of these numbers. You don't have to use all the numbers and don't forget you can add, take away, divide or multiply in the given time. So I'm going to think of a number and I'm going to think of 20. So you have to make the number 20 in the given time. Okay then, so challenge on. Well, and I look forward to seeing you. So, hopefully, you've enjoyed those challenges, and I hope you've enjoyed meeting um, with my members of staff in the maths department here at the Open Academy. As I said to you before, it's all about confidence. Maths is all about confidence. You don't have to be the cleverest person to get maths, it's about being confident of being able to answer the questions. And once that confidence is there, you'll be able to achieve great things in mathematics. So take care and hopefully we'll see you in September.